Of course the world ends. You did it to us. When the ice melted, you said nothing. When the plague spread, you did nothing. When the nukes dropped, you became nothing. At least that's what the Elder says. But cheer up. You'll be happy to know that despite your mistakes, life remains. In a small settlement high above a raging river, people are living and thriving. We call it the Ark. The Ark is humanity's last outpost, a lonely island in an ocean of chaos. Within these walls, we help each other create a new civilization on the ruins of the old one, with the guidance of our leader, the Elder. The Elder tells us we're safe as long as we never leave, because outside these walls lies the zone, the never-ending wasteland. A mass grave spanning the planet, littered with your crumbling monuments to your hubris and arrogance. What the Elder chooses not to tell us is our food and water supplies are running dangerously low. That's why he relies on stalkers, adventurers who leave the Ark, explore the zone and scavenge for precious resources. Stalkers are tough enough to resist the rot and they got the smarts and the firepower to keep the zone ghouls at bay. Stalkers have to be more than human. That's me, Mr. More Than Human, a.k.a. a mutant. I look weird to you, but hey, you look weird to me. So let's leave it at that. If the Stalkers come back from the zone alive, the Ark survives another day. If the Stalkers don't come back, the legacy of mankind will be lost forever. At least... That's what the Elder says. Hello Reformers and welcome back to Mutant Year Zero. Now you may be asking yourselves, well why is this a part one then? Well technically this is the full version of the game and if you'd like to check out the first couple of combat scenarios and the various banter that the characters have between each other, then there is a link to the previous episode which is basically the same thing. I, I just played through this just now and uh, there's not much changed because obviously it's just the tutorial and, and all that sort of thing. Anyway, there is a link down below in the comments and otherwise there is actually a link in the description as well if you'd like to check out the game and maybe purchase it. Anyway, we are going to continue on to Ark now by going through this wonderful travel portal of sorts and uh, hopefully we'll be able to upgrade our weapons. Home sweet home. The elevator's up ahead. Alright, wow, there we go. Okay, so we have now arrived technically next to Ark, and uh, we can only hope that there's not going to be too many enemies here. I don't, I don't think there will be that many enemies. Oh, hold up. Got two ghouls hiding over there. Think they want to hitch a ride on our elevator. Forget that. Let's sneak around and see if there's any others. Ah, there we go. So there are actually enemies. I was thinking to myself, yeah, in the outskirts around the box home base, opens. we're probably going to be fine. The box. box goes in the Ark. We take their food, we take their guns. Mutants in the arc. Too many, too many. Mutants are weak. We kill some fast, we kill some slow. But we kill them all! Fox coming. We kill them all. Ah, there we go. Alright, so we do have a note here. It's a crying shame with this to barter, Delta would have surely given us the discount she mentioned. So here's the deal. A working spark machine lies to the east of the Iron Serpent within the scrap ruins. This was one of those devices for burning things together or whatnot. But of course, there's no silver lining without a fucking cloud above it. Them damn ghoul bastards who lurk in the ruins came out and chased us away before we could recover it. Next time, ghouls, we will get you good. And that is from Stalker Clara. Alright. Well, where is Stalker Clara? 
Um, maybe we'll come across her. Who knows? Anyway, let's take up this, uh, pick up the scrap and open this chest as well. I've already recovered some weapon attachments as well, which is going to be pretty cool. And, oh yes, we have a snazzy visor. 25% added to weapon range. Now that is pretty awesome, and I think I know exactly who I'm going to give that to. Oh yes, I certainly do. We are going to give that to Ducks because, well probably going to be really really good for him and uh, let me see if I can actually find where I put this there we go the helmet fantastic all right otherwise we are going to probably want to upgrade his crossbow if at all possible I think that's probably going to make the most sense I could technically climb up on that ladder there but at the moment I don't know whether that's really necessary I'm actually going to just see what's going on here for a second ah you know what you know what we're going to do I'm actually going to put Borman around here Hopefully he can... Uh, yes, I'm very good at this, Hunter. Yes, okay. Let's just move ducks away a little. And then we will place Borman around here. Is that actually... That's not actually good. Let's hide him there instead. There we go. Okay, so that's much better. Now let's place ducks in a high elevation situation. So that we actually do have a bit of cover if we uh, have some problems with Borman down there. So let's have a look-see here. Okay, so the enemies are going to come back from around here, I assume. So let's just wait here a little bit. Yes, there's the Marauder. It's coming back. Okay, so I'm going to try and shoot. Round about now, I guess. All right, let's activate. See if we can... Can we fire? Yep, there we go. 100%. Absolutely fine. No problem at all here. Let's do it. That is a really, really big thing with Mutant Year Zero. You certainly want to have stealth as your main priority here. Because being able to eliminate enemies without being retaliated against, that's a super big deal. So let me see if I can... Hmm, I'm actually wondering, should I... Hmm, should I do a little bit of a bait and switch kind of thing? Where we might want to take Borman and activate the enemies and then run back here where Ducks is waiting to uh, snipe a couple of people. Maybe that would be an idea, but let's ha let's just have a look here. Ah, uh, they're over there. Okay, well, it seems like they're quite far away. Technically, what I could do is activate Borman pretty close to them, and then I could run him back after he's thrown a Molotov, and that might make a little bit more sense. Ah, there's another Marauder here. Ah, okay, okay. So it seems like we are going to need to do something a little bit different here. Wait a minute, is that is that moving? I thought that Marauder was moving for a second. I was going to be a little bit worried, but no, no, we're fine. All right, so it seems like I am going to need to take ducks over there, which is uh, maybe... Oh, did I, did, I, did, I, did I take damage? No, I didn't take any damage. Phew, that was a little bit... That was a little bit close. Remind me, let's not jump off very high places because I have a feeling that we were probably on the edge of taking damage right there. Anyway... Let's see what I can do to this Marauder here. If it has not moved, uh, I think it might actually be patrolling it around a little bit. I'm going to mm, probably hide around here, I think, is good. And then we're going to get Borman to come a little bit closer just so that we can get some vision on the guy. Let's see if they actually do change their position at all. If they don't change their position, then I, I suppose I will just get a little bit close and then just shoot at them. I don't technically need to be in cover, because I think Ducks does have a pretty awesome accuracy at the moment. Seems like he's not doing anything, so I guess what I am going to do is just do this. Alright, we haven't been spotted. We are at 75%. Let's do it. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, we can always we can always Sorry miss that. with that seventy five percent chance. We can always miss. So I'm just very thankful that I was able to get that done. And uh, let's pick up this couple of weapon parts. I could always use more scrap, more weapon parts. Weapon parts are used to upgrade your weapons, and of course, weapon modifications are used to change how your weapon works, which is going to be pretty fun to find out what they do. Ooh, look at this. We also found some loot over here. 
And we're going to open that chest up. Let's see what's inside. Maybe it's going to be a... Oh, wow. A stalker vest. Found often across the zone, mainly upon the corpses of stalkers, hence its name. This light, flexible armor is easy to move around in, although it doesn't offer the wearer a great deal of protection. Gives us one armor and, well, I, I would assume two HP. That's actually pretty good, because I don't think we have any armor right now. No, we don't have any armor right now whatsoever, so I guess considering Borman actually has a little bit more HP, as you can see he has 9 HP right now, Dux only has 7, so considering that, I'm actually going to give Dux the armor, and uh, yeah, now he's got 9 HP, which is exactly the same as Borman, so that's pretty good, and Dux is generally going to be the one that will most likely engage fights if, uh, if we mess up at some point, because, you know, stealth and me they don't they don't really mix but uh yes yeah. so anyway let's see if i can do something around eh, maybe around here that seems like a pretty good place to be and now let's get borman to do his thing as well bear in mind that i think i'm probably going to shoot with ducks and uh we're gonna try and do a little bit of a flanking maneuver here with borman if i can so we're gonna place him around there okay so now let us ambush. We're going to attack the butcher. Straight up here. Let's see if that's gonna work. 75% chance. I'm happy to take that, that take that risk, I guess. Ooh yeah, there we go. Alright. Lucky. Another one bites the ducks. Alright, so the enemy heard us. They have not seen us yet, which is kind of amazing in my opinion. And uh, now here's the thing, I'm not entirely sure what I should do, because technically what I could do is I could activate Borman right now, I could take him over to that log right around where my cursor is, and then I could shoot the hunter in the face, do about 5 damage if it hits, and not kill him, which is a bit of a shame. But I don't want ducks to take damage either, so I suppose we are going to take that chance and we're going to move over here. This is only half cover as well, which I'm a bit, eh, you know, not, not particularly pleased about. But let's actually just take a look here. Yeah, it seems like we are not going to get to be, uh, you know, sneaky sneaky. So I guess I'm just going to go over this way. He's not in Overwatch, so we don't have to worry about him. But yeah, as you can see, Borman was caught sneaking. Technically, you could be a bit stealthy here. We're going to hope for a critical. No, no, no critical. Oh well, never mind. 15% chance. I mean, it's a very small chance anyway. And uh, yeah, this guy's going to do a little bit of damage. A little bit of damage to Borman, not that much. We do have medkits and all that sort of thing, so there's not really a big deal. And 100% chance because this guy decided not to take any cover. Oh my. Yes, he got murdered. Yes, or sh shall we say, uh, boarded? No, that did, that doesn't work. No, that doesn't work. Okay, let's, uh, let's just forget about that. Ooh, an ancient sight. Very nice indeed. 20% 20, 20 added to weapon range. Okay, and as you can see, you can upgrade weapons in Delta's workshop. All right, what else do we have here? Common scrap, and we also have something else from the other enemy, and Borman leveled up, which means that he gains full HP from that. So I'm very happy with that. That means we don't have to use a uh, an unnecessary first aid kit or anything. And we now have the opportunity to either upgrade his HP by one, or we can get run and gun, which in my opinion is going to be something we will be taking. Now do bear in mind that abilities in Mutant Year Zero work a little bit differently than they do in a game like XCOM, for example. You do not have these abilities available all the time. You need to charge them up, so to speak. So as you can see here, to recharge a skill, you need to get kills. And Borman needs to get two kills to be able to recharge run and gun. And usually, you know, I, w I would assume, you know, if you're going to be using run and gun, you might very well get a kill almost immediately upon using it. Because obviously, you know, hey guys, you're most likely going to be running into someone's face and shooting them very, very quickly. So, yeah, that would obviously give you 50% of the way along to, you know, where you need to be for uh, it to activate. And obviously, Ducks has a similar ability in the form of a, uh, a kind of headshot kind of ability where... He will do 100% critical chance, and he will lose a little bit of accuracy as a result of that. 
So technically what I could do now is I could just walk around here, try and find some additional scrap and everything. And uh, that technically is a good idea, but I don't want to spend too much time doing that. So we're just going to have a brief look around. Maybe there'd be a chest or something around here too, because obviously chests pretty important, you know, for various attachments and maybe some pretty powerful items as well. But it seems like I'm not really finding anything right here. So I will be getting into the elevator and uh, finally arriving at Ark. The Elder meets us at the elevator. He says he doesn't have a second to lose. The mission's too important. Our mission, he says, is a man. And that man is Hammond. Everyone in the Ark knows Hammond, respects him. He's our lead, gearhead going farther into the zone than anybody else, bringing back the machines that help us survive. He knows how to keep those machines running, how to fix them when they fall apart. Hammond keeps the Ark's heart beating. The Elder says three nights ago, Hammond took his team of stalkers and headed north, not telling anyone why. They haven't come back. I've never seen the Elder this shaken before. It scares me. He tells us Hammond has a remote cabin in the north that could yield some clues to his location. Me and Ducks never patrolled that far before, but the Elder says he has faith in us. He believes in us. So, this mission we accept. Go to Hammond's cabin, search for clues, then find Hammond and bring him back alive. The fate of the Ark depends on it. So with that, we have arrived in our main hub area and we're going to go into Delta's fix pit first. Want to know how this goes down? For the right price, I fix and upgrade your shitty gear. Any questions? All right, so uh, we have 28 weapon parts available and as you can see, we have a, well, uh, I wouldn't say a wide variety, but we do have a variety of different weapons to upgrade at the moment. Obviously, you can find additional items out in the zone. So as you see here, we do have this weapon called a Gaper. This is a gas-powered cannon. And, uh, well, technically, I, th I feel like this is a weapon that Borman could use. He's currently using a scatter gun, as you can see right here, which does five damage with eight critical damage. And the Gaper uses, well, it actually does six damage and seven critical. Personally, I feel like this is better. So I'm probably going to be equipping Borman with this instead of the scatter gun. Because it just seems it just seems flat out better, with the exception of the critical, obviously. But it can destroy cover, and it can also knock back enemies, which is really, really good. But I think for the moment, what I'm going to try and do is I will try to upgrade the... Uh, well, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to give, give that a scope. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to try and upgrade the crossbow as much as possible. There's also a damage attachment right here. So you can see here that I actually did pick up something a little bit earlier on. And this is a broiler 50, which gives us one additional critical damage, as well as 50% chance to burn enemies. And I think that's amazing. So we're going to go for that as well. And otherwise, I actually would need another two weapon parts to be able to upgrade this to rank two, which is actually really sad sad to me because I actually thought to myself, oh yes, we have surely enough weapon parts to upgrade it to level two. No, we don't, but it's okay because we did already attach a couple of things to it and that's all very well and good for me. Otherwise, I guess what we're gonna do is we'll exit here and we will go back out Take it easy. to one of the other stores. We're gonna go to Prip's place. After a killer day in the zone, you know you can always come to Prips for some high-quality grog. You want to get loaded? Order a shot. No butane, no bleach, only natural ingredients. I also dabble in a little, uh, antiquity trading. So if you find any cool artifacts out in the wasteland, bring them to me and I might give you something in return. Comprende? 
All right, so we already picked up an artifact, and uh, if you saw the the demo version video that uh, basically details the first sort of section of the of the level, then you'll know that we picked up something called a boombox, and uh, that gave us an artifact point, and we now have the opportunity to spend that in whatever we so desire. So unlocks an extra grenade slot per crew member, twenty percent discount in Iridia's shop. That might actually be pretty good. Extend crew bleed out time by two turns. That might actually be really good though, because that would save us a huge deal. So I guess we'll, we're going to do that just in case. You never know what might happen. Have a swell time out there. And I suppose the last place to go, with the exception of the Elder, is Iridia's shop. You know the drill. Stalkers want gear that keeps them alive. I. Iridia provide the gear. See anything you like, just let me know. There is one rule. Don't ever, ever pull my chain. If you pull my chain, I'll feed your ding-dongs to a zone wolf. Got that? Beautiful. Happy shopping. Alright, so this is obviously just a store where you can buy certain things. So you can get a pipe gun here, and that has... Whoa, that has some insane range. Look at that. That has two more range than our upgraded crossbow at the moment. It has five damage as well. Pretty good. It is not silent though, obviously, so nothing really for me. Ancient Sight, you can also buy for 150. We have 124 available, so technically I could buy like a Molotov or something like that. Could also buy a medkit. I think personally right now I don't really need anything, so we're just going to exit Gator. and we are going to go and speak to the Elder. I'm not entirely sure if we can. My home will always be a haven to you, brave stalkers. After your journeys, pay me a visit. And I'll offer you some guidance, perhaps a story, to help you become wise and strong. Well, it seems like he actually does not have anything for us at the moment. Farewell. Remember your elder's guidance. Alright, well there you go. So, uh, we've kind of done a little bit of upgrading. I think maybe once I find a couple more weapon parts, it might make sense for us to potentially maybe come back and just upgrade our, our crossbow or something. But anyway, let's start our expedition and travel to Hammond's cabin. Yeah, it's a bit worried about going here, but I think we'll be fine as long as we take the stealthy approach. Thanks for signing me up back there, you crazy pig. Yes, Mr. Elder, sign us up for a suicide mission, Mr. Elder. Did you forget there's like a kajillion ghouls out here who want to kill us? Nobody gets to kill you but me now. Shut the duck up and keep moving. I'm telling you, Borman, ain't no happy ending in this story. Stalkers don't get happy endings. We get each other. So watch my back. Hmm, yeah, it's very, very tense atmosphere, isn't it? Especially considering the ghouls that are about to befall us, perhaps, who knows? But, uh, yeah, ah, hello. There, oh. That is a level five. These abandoned campsites always get my feathers touching. Hundreds of them out here. All full of ghosts, shivering in the cold. Right, yeah, we don't want to deal with these. Thanks. We do not want to deal with these. They are going to be pretty difficult to deal with. They have a lot of HP, and we don't have that much damage or anything like that, we so... We should check Hammond's cabin like the Elder asked us to. Yes, I am I am on the way. Oh, whoa, check this thing out. It must have crashed. Look at this symbol on the side. It's like a star. Mm, that's obviously providing some kind of insight to what the uh, the ancients or whatever the previous uh, inhabitants of this world, uh -huh, yes, were able to use. Broken electronics. Oh, there we go. We got some extra scrap there. I'd like some weapon parts, please. Wouldn't mind that. Okay, so, ah, seems like this is the cabin right here. So we've already found it. That's pretty good. I actually thought that it would be a bit further good away. Good news is we reached Heaven's cabin. Bad news is there's two friggin' ghouls casing the joint. Takes everything, but there are no secrets. Where are the secrets? The ones in the north will catch Hammond and squeeze the secrets from his head. Hammond will tell us what the junk is for. The junk is for us. All of it. Uh, 
Uh, I'm not entirely sure how we're supposed to do this, to be honest. I mean, there's a 10 HP level 5 guy in there. I mean, technically we are not really low level. I mean, we're not super low level or anything, but uh, yeah, it is a bit... Stay back. A bit worrying. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to do. I think we're going to do something like this. And, oh my, okay, we're going to have to ambush very, very quickly. That was very close. Very close indeed. I was not anticipating the Marauder to come this way to the right. I, I thought that they would just walk the exact same path backwards. But no, no, it's absolutely fine. We're good. Okay, very nice. I don't think anyone has seen that or even heard it, and Ducks leveled up. Very nice. Okay, so let's actually go and level him up a little bit here. Oh, look at that. Movement boost increases your stamina, permanently giving you an additional plus two of movement range. I think I'm probably going to take that. There we go. And let's see what the guy dropped as well. Oh, a little bit of scrap. Okay, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay, so we have a Shaman here as well as a Hunter. Yeah, I don't know how that's really going to work. I mean, we need to get in there. You can see that. We need to get in there. So there is obviously going to be something that we will need to do. So, I suppose the best thing for us right now would be to go around the side and try to ambush these guys. Because even though Dux is now level 5, we obviously do not have a an upgraded crossbow or anything like that. So it is kind of a bit... Meh, you know, it's not not great, not the greatest weapon ever, but, uh, you know, I think we'll do okay. Let's just see if I can get into a good position, though. I do not want to get flanked by that hunter, if at all possible. So what I would like to try and do is bait the opponent into basically clumping together. I'd like them to clump together so that, I, so that Borman can use his Molotov to uh, set them alight. I don't know whether that can actually happen or whether we'll get lucky in that regard, but we're going to try our best. Technically, I could walk around this guy's vision here. Hmm, I don't think I want to do that, to be honest. Let's just see what I can do with Duxt, and we'll see. Uh, 75%, I think that's good enough. Hmm. I mean, I okay. So here's the thing: I could either do that, or I could use Skull Splitter, which is 100% critical, but a 50% chance to hit. And as you can see, the critical does not do that much extra damage. It's only two extra damage from the looks of things, and we already have a 20% chance. So I think I'll take the 75. That was a miss. That was not a good miss, ducks. Oh dear. Well, ah. Uh, I guess I'm going to try and shoot something, I guess, or move a little bit closer. Are we in full cover right here? No, we're in, we're in partial cover, so it basically doesn't matter whether I move or not. So, I, I guess that's a 100% chance. I think a 100% chance is much better than not, so I guess we're going to do that. All right. There we go. All right. That's what we want to see. That is what we want to see. Okay, so now the Shaman is probably going to do quite a bit of damage. And yeah, you know, they, they're hearing us and all that stuff. But I want to try and protect ducks as much as possible. And of course, we do have a first aid kit if necessary. Oh, seems like... Oh, are you... Are you serious? I'm actually kind of surprised. Okay, well, it's my move now. It is my move now, friend. So, you know what that means. I am going to be throwing this grenade on the group of enemies. Yes, I certainly am. Okay, so let's do that. And they are going to be on fire for three turns. Technically, they're going to die. They're going to die from that. So I don't actually need to worry about them. But I do need to worry about everything else. Oh, yes. I, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's great. Very nice indeed. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Well, technically, I can go here, and then we can get into a partial cover, and we will then have an opportunity to shoot. However, we don't have any ammo. We have no ammo in our current weapon. So, what does hide do? 
Dig down into a defensive position, becoming 25%... Ah, okay. 25% harder to hit. Okay, well... You know what? I'm just going to reload. And we are going to try and shoot... Not these guys. We're going to try and shoot this guy. And maybe we're going to hit... 25%. Is that a 25%? Yeah, that's 25%. That's not particularly good. Okay, I guess what I'm going to do... Is we will try for this... Yeah, and we got him on, on fire. That is fantastic. Okay, there we go. That's exactly what we wanted. So this guy's probably going to... Yeah, he did actually hit. Okay, I was hopeful for a miss there, but thankfully these guys are all going to die eventually. Another two turns and they will all die. So let's hope they don't actually fire or shoot anything. Okay, they did, but it's very small amounts of damage. I'm just really glad I gave Ducks that armor. That's really helping him out right now. Okay, so that Shaman is dead. Yes, that Shaman is now dead. Fantastic. Very happy to hear that. And otherwise, we're going to reload once again. These guys are all going to die, as said before. So let's see if we can try and do some damage to the Hunter. So I guess I could just do this. That's a 50% chance. I'm not a big fan of that 50% chance, to be honest. Maybe what we want to do first, actually, is uh, maybe we want to switch to Borman here. And maybe we want to do a little something. Like moving this way. And just firing at this guy. There we go. Alright, so now if Ducks can get a hit... On this hunter, then we will be perfectly fine. There you go. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so there, yeah, there, there, that hunter is dead. Yep, there we go. And the others will die in now one turn. Ooh, that was a lot of damage. That that guy is doing a lot of damage right there. I was actually wondering whether I should just move ducks and uh, you know try and safeguard him, but uh, it's not really necessary. It is not necessary whatsoever. I don't even need to move him now. I can basically just go to the next turn and that's it because they're, they're all dead. Pretty amazing. The Molotov is a very powerful weapon in my opinion. Okay, so let's just reload just in case. I don't think anything else is gonna happen, but uh, I'd like to make sure that we're okay. Let's use Overwatch. And there you go. They're all dead. Fantastic. Okay, so we are... Oh, we're, we're also full HP. Okay, that's pretty fantastic. Let's get a medkit here. And what's this? Ah, an artifact. So this tube-like object gives its user the ability to view distant objects up close. Might also come in handy as a weapon if you get in a tight spot. Yes, okay. Well, there you go. So we gained another artifact point, so we can gain additional upgrades, of course. And uh, we do need to loot other things. Oh, we have a damage module. Plus one additional critical damage as well as a 20% chance to disable robotic enemies. Okay, well, we haven't come across, as far as I'm aware, at least at the moment, any robotic enemies Regroup. just yet, but maybe we will come across some. There are some enemies over this way, but I think that is just the, the uh, animal patrols that we saw earlier, so we don't really need to worry about that. And otherwise, we're going to go into the cabin and see what's inside. Zone ghouls stripped this cabin clean. Almost everything useful was gone. But it's a good thing ghouls can't read. They ignored the diary hidden inside Hammond's desk. Me and Ducks aren't big readers either. But we look for answers in the diary. And all we get is more questions. Hammond writes how he found the crash machine near his cabin. He's convinced the machine was sent as a message from a mythical place beyond the zone called Eden, where everybody's happy and safe. When Hammond sees another machine fall north of here, he takes his stalker crew up there to find it. I close the diary. Here's the problem. Eden's a fairy tale. Some bedtime story mutants believe in, so they can get to sleep at night. So either Hammond is onto something, or his brain's got the rot, and he's about to kill a bunch of good stalkers. Guess we gotta find out. Me and Ducks have to go north. Farther from home than we've ever been. It's dangerous. Ducks thinks I'm crazy to press on. 
I don't disagree with him. I don't care about some stupid Eden. But we need to find Hammond. And if he's going north, we're going north. If he's going north, that makes him a grade-A certified loony. No one goes up there, Borman. And what's with those two stalkers he took with him? They should know better. They're following orders, just like us. The Ark can't run without Hammond, so we're bringing him back. Especially with ghoul packs coming this far south. Wonder what they're planning. Mm, ghouls are too dumb to plan. Someone's pushing them down here. I'm feeling in my feathers. Well, with that revelation, we will be traveling north. If you'd like to see more, then by all means let me know. Otherwise, you can check out the game through the link in the description. And otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.